Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sean Vibes. I'm so glad to have you here. Today, we are going to be taking a look at what kind of father your partner, spouse, or significant other would be. This video, just as a quick energy check, is for those of you who want to have children one day and you'd like to have those children with a male or male identifying person. If that is not you, this is not your reading today, but I would like to invite you to check out one of the other pick a card videos on my channel or one of the time mixed readings. Of course, you can check those out as well. Or you can, if you've already seen all of those, go to my other channel. It's called Sean Wilson. And that's where I have like all my acting stuff and host the dreamer podcast. Um, if you are somebody who wants to have children one day, but you see yourself having children with a woman or a female identifying person, I do have that video coming out for you soon. Uh, so again, this would not be your reading today. Okay. For those of you who are sticking around, I have compiled for you, ha ha ha, compiled, get it, pile, pile, anyway, three piles. <laughs> so we have in the top left corner, the Light Seer's Tarot by Chrisanne. In the top right corner, we have the Gilded Tarot Royale by Cyril Marchetti. And in the bottom left corner, we have Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yashitani. Yoshi Yashitani. Um, what I've done is I've taken three cards from each of those decks that represent, I think, qualities of fatherhood. First of all, there's no I think in the fact that the emperor is the representation of one of the representations of fatherhood in the tarot, right? He also represents discipline. And we uh, tend to hope that the father of our children uh, helps with the disciplining of those children. I also chose the King of Cups from each deck. King of Cups represents emotional stability, emotional maturity, and the ability to show love. We would also like that quality in a father for our children, I am sure. And then thirdly, I chose the King of Pentacles because again, uh, another quality, we would want the father of our children to help provide for those children. Notice I say help. I'm not saying it's all on the dad to do, but we would like them to be able to help us afford these expensive ass kids. So <laughs> take a second, take a look, see which of these three piles is drawing you in. And that is where you will find your reading for today. Uh, go to the description box of this video or the first comment, and that's where you'll find the timestamps leading you to your specific reading. I think I've covered it all. I'm going to be silent now while you make your choice. Hi, group one. Welcome to your reading. So you guys were attracted to the Light Seer's Tarot. Uh, before I start, in case you guys, any of you guys uh, skip the intro, I just want to do a quick energy check. A reminder that this reading is for people who want to one day have children and have those children with a male identifying person. This is not for people who don't want kids. Please feel free to check out one of my other tarot readings here on this channel if you don't want kids with a guy. Okay, so I have, as usual, already shuffled your cards, but not pre-plucked them. The three cards that were part of your selection process at the top of this video, I put back in the deck before I did your very thorough shuffle. So let's find out some information today about your partner. What kind of father will group one's partner be? All right, we have the son. What kind of father will group one's partner be? We have the six of cups. What kind of father will group one's partner be? We have the chariot. What kind of father? Oh, okay. And we have the moon. Okay, so um, right off the bat, what we see here is that we have three major arcana, right? We've got the sun, we've got the moon, and we've got the chariot. Um, and what I'm immediately picking up for with these energies that we have is that your partner 
becoming a father. Oh, sorry. And we also have the six of cups. We have the three major arcana, but we also have the six of cups. And what I'm immediately picking up on is that your partner is going to be triggered by fatherhood. Okay. Um, I'm getting that there was a lot of unhappiness in his childhood, uh, around parental neglect, the neglect of the father in particular. I'm getting that this is going to be underneath the surface for him, uh, for a while in becoming a father. It's not so much of a detraction for him that he's like, oh, I don't want to have kids. At least I'm not getting that yet. I will pull some more cards in just a second, see if we can get some more information. But right uh, now, what I am getting is definitely a sense of this being a person for whom, um, finding out that they are going to be a father doesn't come with peace. It doesn't come with a whole lot of joy. Uh, it does trigger, like I said earlier, uh, unresolved things from his past. And, uh, and, and quite suddenly, it's almost like he's going to become someone different than you've known him to be overnight. Uh, just the decision to have kids at all on your part with this person may be because you thought that he would want that, that you guys have talked together about it. And he uh, seemed to be down for the job, right? Because it is parenting is a job, isn't it? Um, but when the time actually comes, once you guys actually find out he's a father uh, or going to be a father, there is something underneath the surface that gets triggered in him. And, um, and, and it, it triggers not just a resistance to becoming a father, but sadness around it. So let's see if we can get some more information regarding this, you guys. Okay. All right. More information for group one on what kind of father their partner will be. Can we get more information around what kind of father group one's partner would be? Oh, okay. So I just got two together. We got Knight of Pentacles and Page of Cups. Knight of Pentacles and Page of Cups. More information whew, around what kind of father group one's partner will be. All right. We also have the star. You guys, this isn't looking so great. And I, you know, I always struggle with providing challenging information to people. Okay, so. All right. What it looks like is that, you know, there's clearly an, an arrested development here. And it's because of this unhealed uh, trauma, this unhealed yeah, trauma is the word that I'm getting, this unhealed hurt from the past. And and I'm getting that it's trauma because it, it's still at play. And that it's it's like it's been suppressed. It was it was not it hasn't been dealt with on any level. Um and so this is why there is the resistance to and not, not even resistance, just straight out depression and sadness. Um Upon finding out that he's going to be a father, I'm, I'm getting that there is um, definitely the feeling that he can't necessarily provide in a way that he, th that feeling is, is making him feel as though that's like, it's just too much. It's overwhelming, the idea of needing to provide. I'm also getting that um, there was a there was a lack of love in the childhood, a lack of complete acceptance. And so the ability to love new people is something that he struggles with. Like he might be someone that has a very close relationship with very few people but doesn't really let new people in and this is going to sound a little bit off and it's because it is but in his mind 
a new baby is a new person. I mean, a new baby is a new person, but he's, he's, going to process that the same way he would having someone new start up at his job. Like someone new comes to his job and the walls go up. He's not ready to welcome them into the family yet. They're not family yet. And what I'm getting is that your partner would have, unfortunately, that same kind of reaction to to a new child, to your child coming into the family. I, and it I'm also getting that that would happen each child, not just with the first one. Um, I am getting a very strong feeling that this person is possibly on the spectrum for narcissism uh, because there's very much a self-centeredness here. I'm getting a fear that they won't be or like I'm getting that he's the center of attention in the relationship right now. Like all things and all decisions are if this is someone that you're already in a relationship with, if you are someone who is not yet in a relationship, if you have not yet met that spouse or partner, hey, you guys have the greatest of news. This is def- with everybody, honestly, this is, you know, changeable. You can take what you're learning based on the energies today and make new choices that will result in different outcomes for the future. But for right now, uh, what I'm picking up on here is that uh, if you are already involved with someone, he is the shot caller. Even if he does it in a covert or manipulative way, it's it's like he is the son, right? Um, and everything just centers around him. He is the star of the relationship. And there is a concern for him with becoming a father that he wouldn't be anymore. A concern that the child would somehow overshadow him or stop him from getting his needs completely met. Um, see if I can get more information on this page of swords. My first feeling is... Um, that with this page of swords, there is, believe it or not, hope. Believe it or not, hope that um, there's the possibility of his coming to a place or making the choice to learn new ways of thinking, to grow, to to get some help for whatever is going on inside there. Um, if it's actual MPD, narcissistic personality disorder, that is a harder fix than if it's just uh, woundedness and a tendency towards selfishness. And I, I do feel uh, very, very compelled to tell that to you. I don't want to, by any stretch of the imagination, make anybody think, oh, you've got a narcissist, no problem. Just give him a book and everything will be fine. No. Uh, but with this page of swords that we have here, I am feeling like there is, you know, the possibility of healing with learning. Uh, can I have more information on page of swords for group one, please? More information on page of swords. So we have 10 of swords. Oh, Lord, my heart. Okay, you guys. So if there is a uh, learning that is undertaken in the attempt to heal, in the attempt to improve, um, I'm getting that it is going to be a rocky road um, and that there will be a lot of back and forth around it. There's going to be some resistance as well as resentment around having to do it at all. As though it's this idea of, I got to go through all of this just for this baby, just for this kid. Um, and so again, I, I feel like there might be a narcissism issue here. Uh, let's see what else we can learn. More information about, yeah. Okay, so we got King of Swords. So again with the swords, right? And again with the, there's a coldness. There's a needing to be right. There's no room for flexibility, interpretation 
of the events of like the changing of the home. I feel like this is a person who would not want on any level the changes that would be required for making space for a new baby, not just in uh, the physical home, but also within the unit that you are. Yeah, and it's all around this this trauma, this woundedness. And it's going to be very jarring to you guys when this comes up. So maybe it's not actual MPD because I'm getting that when the announcement of the new baby comes along or the diagnosis of pregnancy, is that considered a diagnosis or do we just use that word for disease? I don't know. Not a doctor. Um, but... I'm getting that the change in him will be sudden. It'll be sudden. Uh, for those of you who are in relationships with narcissists in their relatively new relationships, this could be the thing that takes you out of the love bombing stage and into the beginning of the devalue and discarding stages. All right. Group one, I wish I had better news. I really, really do. But that's what I see here in these cards. And um, <laughs> to quote Reem from White Feather Tarot, I have to tell you exactly what I see. So uh, given that our reading today is about fatherhood to come, whether or not you choose to have children with this person is definitely still optional, as this reading was for people who have not yet had those children with this person. All right. Thank you guys for being here. And I will see you in my next one. Hey, group two, how are you? Listen, before I start your reading, I just want to do a quick energy check in case there are people who came straight to the reading without listening to the intro. The energy check is this. This reading today, this whole video today is only for people who want to one day have children and want to have those children with a male identifying person. This is not for people who don't want children or already have children or uh, want to have or possibly want to have children, but have them with a female identifying person. If you are the second of those two, uh, I do have a video coming out for you soon, but this one today is not your reading. So please feel free to check out one of the other videos on my channel. Alrighty, group two, let's see what we can find out today about the kind of father your spouse, significant other, or partner will be. And I am just going to use the word partner going forward because that will encompass all three. What kind of father will group two's partner be? All right, so we have Ace of Cups. What kind of partner, sorry, what kind of father will group two's partner be? We have Eight of Cups. We also have Nine of Wands. I am loving this for you guys. <laughs> I am very, very, very much loving this so far. Sorry, I'm usually I stand when I do these, but um, I've lost the light. The sun has already gone down for the day, and so when I stand, it casts a shadow on the table. So I'm seated today, which makes it harder for me to see what's happening on the table. All right, getting back to pulling for you. What kind of father will group two's partner be? I've got the nine of pentacles. So this is a dude that loves the idea of being a father. He is very much excited about becoming a father. He, to the best of his ability in the beginning, really takes to being a father. And the reason why I say it that way is because none of us can do this shit from jump. Um, <laughs> like, I feel like this is particularly true with parenthood, but with anything that we do, anything we endeavor to do, there is a learning curve, right? Uh, but with parenthood in particular, this, that can be a hard 
thing, a hard transition to make going from being just a partner or even single without a partner to becoming a parent. But your uh, partner is really, really, he's about it. You know, he's like, I'm here for this. And, and that has a, a bigger meaning than just, I am ready to and willing to do this. But I'm getting that for him, there's a sense of being a father is why he's here. As though he's got, um, knows that he's got something to give in the parenting of, of children, of others. This might be someone who works with kids, uh, maybe as a teacher or at a rec center, maybe coaches uh, children's sports, little leagues and things like that. Or he takes on the big brother role in his family, whether he actually has younger siblings or not. He might be an only child, and but have cousins that he tends to take that big brother role on. I don't really feel that. I feel like it's more along the lines of this is someone who's got the experience of big brothering. Uh, for a lot of men, the first time they ever hold a baby or change a diaper is when they become a father. And this is one of the reasons why becoming a father can be so hard for men and so frustrating for women. Um, meaning that sometimes the the mom just feels like she's without help and it's because the dude doesn't know what the fuck to do you know um, <laughs> too much of of our society at least from when i was growing up did not boys didn't babysit but girls did right so by the time a woman becomes a mom she knows how to do some of it but for boys it's all brand new or for men i should say it's all brand new they're doing these things for the first time, becoming a father. And let's say the mother is 24 to 30 years old. But by the time she becomes a mother, she's already done it for at least a decade. Uh, it, but I'm getting the sense that with your partner here, uh, becoming a father is something that he he goes wholeheartedly into. He, he stops... He doesn't have, once he becomes a father, he doesn't have that feeling of needing to find something to fulfill him. This is the thing that brings fulfillment to him. And it's, you know, not just, I'm getting that it's not just the becoming a father, like he's got eyes only for the child, but it's being in this family unit with you, the the three of you to begin with together, if or unless you have twins or triplets, right? Then it'd be the four or five of you. Um, but and it, but then also extend it out to when more children come along. I'm getting that um, there is f for him this idea of now. Uh, let's see if I can say it in a less es esoteric way. Um, what was before ceases to matter. The past is, is definitely behind him. Um, his, his adult past is definitely behind him, but there is, um, I'm getting that again, there's this very strong sense of family of having been in the space of, um, care, care. I never know if to, you say care, caregiver or caretaker. I, I think it should be caregiver, but people say caretaker. I don't know, but he helped out with the younger ones. Okay. Uh, if it was a family event, he possibly organized games, but, um, or maybe for your partner, that wasn't what he was like, but now that he's getting ready to become a dad, like the baby's not even born yet, right? You guys find out he's that you're going to be parents and he's already planning to coach the little league team. He's just, like I said, he's here for this. Uh, earning is not a concern for him. I am getting two things with this. I'm getting that uh, in some respects, for some of you guys listening to this today, it's because he's done the earning. He's done the achieving. He's comfortable in his career. And for him, building and starting a family is the next step. Uh, you guys might be that couple that did it the quote right way. Um, meaning, you know, a lot of books advocate when you marry somebody being married to each other for if, if marriage is the choice you make, get it that we're a different society now. But uh, when you've chosen your partner, I should say, being together for seven years prior to beginning a family so that you guys have time to 
learn how to live with each other and also build up the reserves that you need for having children or taking care of children because children are their expenditures, right? They consume, but they do not produce. They do not add to the household uh, in any kind of monetary way, uh, though some would say that they bring other joys to the family. So I feel like you guys, uh, by the time, you know, the question of fatherhood, parenthood comes up for you, you are that couple who has saved for that or who has gotten to a place of enough financial comfort that bringing another mouth into the home, mouth or mouths, someone who is going to take but not add to financially your household will not be a hindrance to you. I'm a hundred percent getting that he is like all about this. This It's a new kind of love for him. And this is a man that loves love. He loves the feeling of love. And so it feels good to him to be able to... Uh, uh, share that love, be a part of that love. Let me see if anything else comes up for you guys. Do we have any more information that we can share with group two about their partner? What kind of, what kind of father will group two's partner be? It's hard for me to get those words right. Sometimes I want to interchange them. What kind of father will group two's partner be? Okay, seven of pentacles. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that. This is a person that's got no regrets in his life. This is a person who doesn't feel the need to, like, when you guys find out that you're going to have kids, he's not like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this, or he gets all contemplative. And it's like, it's like a pinball, right? The inform the um, news comes and he immediately switches gears. There's no need, there's no worry. There's no need for him to try to, you know, figure out if he has done enough with his life, if he has enough money to be able to adequately contribute to the care and rearing of this child. He doesn't need to assess where he has been, what he has done, where uh, what his life choices is, have been. He already feels, uh, he, he's, he immediately feels ready, ready and worthy. We got the sun. More information, please, about group two's partner as a father. What else can we find out today about group two's partner as a father? And then we have the nine of cups. Yeah. So once again, um, so, you know, we did get sun in reverse, but I'm feeling with it being surrounded by seven of cups, uh, uh, sorry, seven of pentacles in reverse and the nine of cups. Um, I'm getting the sense that like, he's not that man that feels like all the focus needs to be on him. He has to be the center of attention. Um, you know, that, that life is going to change, uh, negatively because of the addition of someone else to the family. I get the sense of him being a part of the universe, right? Instead, like the sun is, I don't know if it actually, okay, I'm about to sound real ignorant. And let me just say, and I think I've said in other videos before, science is not my thing, all right? And I could pause this tape and look it up just so I can seem smart, but I'm going to admit to you, I don't know science. But <laughs> I I can't remember if I learned that it either is or that people used to believe that the sun is the center of our universe, all right? And I say all of that just to say your partner is not that guy. He's not that person that identifies as the center of the universe. He sees himself as a very important part of the overall universe, of the whole solar system, I should say. And so... um the addition of this child for him is more of that, that, that feeling of all of us being equally important, equally necessary, equally loved and loving, lovable. Um, and there is such immense satisfaction that comes for him with finding out that he's going to be a dad. Again, I'm here for this. I keep getting, I keep hearing that I am here for this. I'm here for this. And it's this idea of feeling as though, oh yeah. And this is also one of the reasons why the earning is not a concern for him. Uh, once this announcement or the news of becoming parents comes up, because he's not that guy that feels like I'm here to achieve something in my career. That's not, I'm not, that's not to say that he, won't or hasn't by the time you guys get to the point of choosing to have a family. It's just that he feels very strongly that he's here to be not just a dad, but a good dad. 
that is, and, and so the focus for him becomes, becomes the universe of your family, you know, and not just, not just y'all's immediate family, but again, the extended family, I feel is very much a part of, um, the, the, the sphere in which he operates. That's not the word I mean. But there's a closeness. So your your kids will know their cousins and their grandparents and their aunts and their uncles, you know, and, and those people will know them equally well. There is I get the feeling of a very a very loving reception of the news of becoming a father and that he will um he will make the care of the of this child, these children of the like the priority for him of the utmost importance. He will be at every game. He will be at every concert. He will drive them to ballet. He will help make cookies for the bake sale. He will teach life lessons. He will teach discipline. He will show compassion. Compassion when it's needed. He will listen. And he will also learn from his children. This is a happy man who loves that's the kind of father that your partner will be grouped to. All right, that's what I have for you today. Thank you for being here with me. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next one. Hi, group three. Welcome to your reading. In case you skip the intro, quick energy check for you. This reading is for people who want to have kids one day and want to have them with a male identifying person. If that is not you. This is not your reading. If you don't want to have children at all, none of this video is for you. If you want to have children one day, but want to have them with a female identifying person, I have that video coming out for you soon. But this one again today is not it. So you guys, I would like to invite y'all, uh, both of those two groups of people that I just mentioned to check out one of the other readings on my channel. There are pick a cards and timeless readings for you to choose from. And then if you've already seen all of those, uh, maybe take a look at my other channel. It's where I keep all of my acting stuff and where I host the podcast, Not So Average with Sean Wilson, which is all about pursuing your dreams. As usual, I have pre-shuffled your cards, but not pre-plucked them. You guys were guided in by Tarot of the Divine by Yoshi Yashitoni. And uh, the three cards that were there for you to choose, uh, which pile you wanted at the top of this video, I have already put back in this deck before shuffling them. So with that being said, let's take a look at what kind of father your partner would be. I will be using the term partner instead of listing off all the different ways this this person could be your partner. Alrighty. What kind of father will group three's partner be? What kind of father will group three's partner be? All right. So we have the hanged man. There we go. What kind of father will group three's partner be? We have the five of cups. What kind of father will group three's partner be? We have the high priestess. What kind? Oh, two major arcana. I just noticed that. What kind of father? What kind of father will group three's partner be? All right, nine of coins. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, so right off the top, what I'm getting for you guys is you actually, um, this partner of yours, whether you've already met him or not, the person that you'll be having these children with is um, a very go with the flow kind of person. Uh, they are content in life. They are at peace with themselves and with life and therefore will bring that into the way they father. Um, there's like an acceptance. I'm getting this as a very hands-on dad in um, a nurturing way. Uh, he might actually be the primary caregiver for your children. Um, he's, I I'm getting the sense of uh, a stay-at-home dad 
Um, if he's not a stay at home dad, he is definitely very, very, very present and very, very, very available in the best possible way. I'm getting that he's very much in touch with his feelings and emotions, uh, that this is not a person who lives in regret, that he is happy with himself and with his life and is available, emotionally available, vibrationally available to share that uh, openness and vulnerability uh, with the child with you as well, if that's the kind of relationship you guys have. Um, but I'm definitely getting that, you know, this is, he's not concerned with financial independence. I'm also getting, and this might be a, oh no, for some of you, I hope not. Uh, but I'm also getting that he, he's not overly concerned with earning period. Okay, so this, again, is the guy who might, um, you know, uh, like I have an image in my head, but of course not everybody's guy is going to look like this. But what I'm, what I'm seeing, you know, in my third eye here is like, he's very relaxed, even in his dress style, not just like his energy is very relaxed. He's relaxed in his dress style. He's non-traditional in our idea, at least in Western society, at least in American society of father, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched Blackish, um, but oh, hippie. Okay, that's the word I'm looking for. He's kind of like a hippie. I'm not saying he definitely is a hippie, but he's he's like a hippie. I'm I'm getting hippie, y'all. <laughs> um, meaning like he he you guys might have met over a shared love of tarot, right? Uh tarot uh, might have brought y'all together other new age or metaphysical ideas, practices, uh a group for people who you know, are spiritually minded, but in the, again, non-religious, non-traditional way. I'm getting very much that he is a non-traditional uh, father figure, a non-traditional, uh, you know, the ideas of masculinity that we've had for so long, um, he does not typify those at all. In fact, he typifies the opposite. He is the open dad that, that, will cry in front of his kids with no shame, you know, has cried or will cry in front of you if you haven't met him yet. Um, no, I'm not saying he's a cry baby. I'm just saying this is a man that is in touch with his emotions. He's in touch with his feelings. He's very, very intuitive. And that intuition that he has helps him to be a spectacular father. He notices, he pays attention to everything. He feels your children. And when I say feel, I don't just mean feels for them in his heart, like has feelings for, but he feels them vibrationally. He gets them. Like if there's a good, a good, yeah, a good parent, bad parent scenario in your situation, it'll be that he's considered the good parent, right? Because he's the one that's, that's easy, very easy to talk to because he's got a very open heart and, and he's got willing ears and a shoulder to cry on. He's quick with the hugs. I get that he's a hugger in general. I get that uh, part of your attraction to him is his emotional availability. I'm also getting that some of you that chose this pile don't mind at all being bad parent. Um, you have a very strong sense of discipline, structure. Uh, this is also part of why many of you who chose this pile might be the primary earner, either because um, you work more than he does, given his personality type, or that you just earn more than he does. Uh, you and 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 you have that. You know, some of you who got who chose this group might have that that tendency towards um not just structure and discipline but rigidity that is required a lot of times for being successful particularly like in corporate environments if you happen to work in such an environment and so because of that your uh partner would be you know the softer parent for the children to land on uh that's not to say that they won't love you as well it's just that he's Mr. Nice Dad 
<laughs> right? Uh, always quick with the hugs. Like I said before, quick with the cookies. Let's see if I can find out. Yeah, I said quick with the cookies. Let's see if I can find out more information for you guys about, oh, flip-flops. I meant to say that. I just kept seeing him in flip-flops, like so much with the flip-flops and board shorts, right? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, like this guy, he knows his three placements. He knows his sun, moon and rising signs. You know, he might be the first one to introduce your children to the um, metaphysical ideas that you all share. Um, or that the, the two of you, you know, the thing that brought you all together, if that's how you met. It might be he, him that first gives them their first set of crystals, right? All right, what else can we find out, please? Can we have a little bit more information about uh, Group 3's uh, partner and the kind of father that he will be? All right, can we have a little bit more information, please? If there's anything else to get, there might not be, guys. Sometimes it's like, nah, you got it. And the cards are like, no more. Do we have any more information to share? Thank you. Page of Wands. Yes, he is going to be bringing, like he's going to foster in them the idea of excitement of life, excitement in life. He will be introducing them to new things all the time. Like if you guys have arts festivals and culture festivals uh, in the place where you live, which I feel like now in 2023, every place in America does. I can't speak to other cultures. Actually, you know what? Other cultures were probably doing it before us because of their shared experience with one another, right? Um, anyway, but your uh, partner as a father, he would always have some like event. He will always have like some event or a festival, something fun to take the children to where they will learn and be inspired. I'm getting a big, a, a, a large sense, sorry, a huge sense, a big sense, a sense I'm feeling... <laughs> I am feel because they all mean the same thing. Why was I sitting there going over and over with those words? But anyway, I'm getting the sense of his like he's just he's so fun. He's a fun he's a fun dad, and he you know enjoys doing these finding these kinds of um, events and things to share with the children. He, in, he introduces them to new ideas, new concepts. Um, I'm getting that the neighborhood kids also really enjoy like being around your home because of his presence. Um, again, not to say that they don't like you. It's just that, you know, he's a stay at home dad. He's there. Uh, a lot of these other kids, they probably have both parents working. And so as far as a parental figure goes in the neighborhood, he's, he's the dad. He might even be that one that dresses up as Santa for Christmas. For those of you who celebrate that holiday. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely getting the introduction of ideas, the inspiring. He's very inspiring to your children and to uh, the, the others around him. He's he's inspirational in your home. Um, I'm getting the sense that he might also redecorate often, not super expensive redecorations, but like rearranging things in the home. So it's not just, oh, he goes online, finds the perfect feng shui and sets up your living room that way. No, there's something about the moving of energy that he feels uh, called to do every once in a while, uh, it, l allowing it to bring newness into your experience in of the home, newness into the environment, moving the energy around to keep you all from being stuck as individuals and as a family um yeah so i feel that he's gonna he's just gonna be such a, a positive influence on your children like uh you know the king of cups card and what i said of king of cups and in the introduction your your partner is going to be the embodiment of that in his approach to fathering he's that guy you can see his feelings on his face right he wears his love for these children on his sleeve he is the dad they can count on he will be there he will be there and he will be there with love and for him it's not a feeling of obligation it's a feeling of um just again joy i just get joy and like bigness i'm getting there's he's a big a big loving personality you know um and it just means so much to him 
that he is a father. He loves, he loves being able to nurture, nurture these children of his. All right, group three, that's what I've got for you today. Thank you so much, so, so much for being here. And I will see you in my next one.